Hey guys, what's up? It's me here, Haley O, back again with another video. And if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, like, comment, and other videos you guys would like for me to film in the future. So I know I haven't been uploading for a while, no excuses, but I just want to get straight into this video and talk about um, track. A bunch of you guys had requested for me to do a Q&A on track and just like my life in general. So I thought I'd go ahead and do that for you guys and answer a few of your questions. So let's get on with this video. So I know some of you guys are going into season or already in season and haven't had a track meet yet. So I just thought I'd give you details on what a track meet is like. Um, as far as I know, track meets are very long. They don't really last a short amount of time unless you're having a dual meet, which is a dual meet is basically um two that come together and they go against each other usually this for championships or anything like that so that's what a dual meet is and those usually can last mm, a little less like maybe four hours but oh, oh shoot <laughs> but a full track meet can last up to mm, eight to maybe three o'clock or even more so just make sure you eat healthy during that time span and if you are having a track meet like right now I have a track meet this coming weekend so I have to eat healthy you don't and drink a lot of water before track meet make at least a gallon of water before that day and the days before so you stay hydrated because it can get hot out there and make sure you just prepare your body mentally and physically you don't want to just you know have to do it and just do it physically you know you can show up at practice and do right and still be in shape but you're not eating healthy at the same time so make sure you just keep your body healthy um for me i'm kind of a hypocrite because i do eat popcorn i mean i'm gonna be a normal person i'm gonna eat fast foods i mean come on guys come on so just kind of wash that body out with some nutrients you know that vitamin d that vitamin c all that um, vitamin D I don't know what I'm saying because vitamin D doesn't that come from the Sun I don't know what I'm saying but yeah so a track meet there's a bunch of food there and don't get tempted because that's you no know, wait until after you're done with all your events and then eat a bunch of hamburgers like they have hamburgers hot dogs you know all those fruit stands and it's just like you can't help yourself and you see all these people and you're just like why me why me and your race is about to begin so you just can't eat it so what I recommend bringing is some nuts almonds highly recommended because those are good for your body especially when you're about to run I don't know they give you like a boost of energy um what else you can bring fruit I wouldn't recommend bringing like you know something that fruit holds I wouldn't recommend bringing that or eating you can bring it but don't eat it right before a race because it may like you know give you side cramp so I don't really recommend eating that that's just for me because when I'm at track means I feel like I can't eat anything I feel like I'm about to pass out it's just not good so I recommend eating well I recommend eating after if you have if you're scared or nervous because you know, you know when it's gonna happen. Also, um, track meets can run late or even happen earlier. If you're an independent runner, which means you're just by yourself and you're not with a team, um, I recommend getting there earlier than you think the race is gonna happen but if you're with the team and you have your coach to text and you can tell him like hey coach um what time do you think my race is gonna start so I can wake up go to the track meet and you know watch a couple races then you know warm up and stretch and then get ready for my race to come on because you gotta remember guys there is um at least for my track meets it does start off from eight like people that are eight years old to you know high schoolers and beyond well not beyond but you know what i mean like 16. so i do recommend just like 
asking a coach or if you're an independent runner just you know schedule and organize how you plan to be there and your transportation and everything so yeah question probably a bunch of you guys have wondered is what events do I do and for me I do the 400 the try and get me the 400 which I'm eventually starting to do the 200 the 4x1 the 4x4 if I make the really team and the 100 the 60 indoor when indoor season comes around and that's about it I don't really do any long distance runs or races um, I'm trying to practice hurdles but as far as now that's not going to be my event and I'm also trying to do long jump but I hurt myself I injured my lower kneecap so I don't think I'll be doing any like field field events like javelin, shot put, high jump, uh, anything like that I'm not going to do because I'll just stick with my email. What you guys have been asking is should I use blocks, what type of spikes to get and basically for me um, it took me a long time to get into blocks and learn how to finish and it still is a struggle for me now. Basically um, since I started track in around third grade and I started getting into blocks and I never had spikes at first when I did track I'd always just use regular running shoes so you never want to get in spikes without blocks that's just going to ruin everything you may injure yourself so get in spikes and the next topic I'm going to be talking about is where to get your spikes and how to know which spikes are right for you because there's different types but on um, to the blocks uh, blocks there's different settings and I just want to tell you the basics because I'm still learning and I don't want to tell you the wrong information so basically blocks is a thing to help you get out and get you know in that position to run um, I don't recommend using blocks in a long distance race long distance races usually start on a kind of a slope and then they kind of go in on the first lane and then they just keep going in that first lane for the whole race and for 400 yes use blocks because that is kind of a sprint race kind of uh, so I would highly recommend using blocks 100 definitely use blocks 200 that's a yes because um, the blocks um, the 100 meter race is something you can win or lose you're definitely not going to win if you don't use I mean, you could win. If everybody is not using blocks, then maybe there's a chance for you. But I'm just saying, if everybody in your race is using blocks, they're already getting a head start because they're pushing off of something and they have momentum to get out there and be at the 40 yard line before you know. So, without further ado, I'm going to get into spikes and what type. For me, I'm a sprinter. So, Basically, I use Nike Spikes. No, this video is not sponsored by Nike, and it probably, no, okay? So don't think that, but I'm just showing you, like, the basics with Spikes and um, what type to get. There's different types for long-distance runners. Long-distance runners, Spikes are more airy, and they're more soft. Spikes for sprinters are more kind of hard and, like, that boom, 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 boom like, that kind of spike to get it at a fast pace. Spikes for sprinters, I don't really know about long distance runners, but I will do information if you guys have any questions, I will answer them and give you details about it, but I don't know that in depth, I don't really know about sprinters. So, sprinters, uh, let me go get my spikes. So, these are the spikes that I use currently right now. I am investing in some new ones just because I've had these for about maybe two, two and a half, three years. And they're kind of getting worn out on this part because that's the part where, you know, you're running on your heel and then you're running like, ch -ch 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 -ch, like that. I know that's so stupid, but I'm going to show you guys up close and personal of what they look like and...
question that may that may help y'all um, is nervousness and how to deal with it right when you're about to go and that goes like a mark you sit like I'm just gonna help you as far as me I still get nervous but it's to the point where I'm just like you know anxious and ready to get out there and be like like that it's not like a nervous where oh my gosh this girl she's so big like she's about to beat me she looks strong and then there's a girl over here that she's like you know ready she's focused she's looking at the line like guys don't let that overwhelm you because 10 out of 10 10 out of 10 they're worried about their own self so you need to worry about your own self don't worry about others because that's just going to make you more nervous and it's going to feel like more of a threat to you when it's really not so don't be focused on that have your mindset on i'm gonna get to that finish line first i'm gonna be the one who gets to that finish line first and even if you don't that's still okay because you felt good about it hopefully and you did your best everyone's there for a reason they're not there to you know just play there to you know just play around and stuff even though you do want to have fun and like get to know people you just want to keep your mind focused um people will ask you your times and why you're getting on the track they they may ask you your times and they may be like hey what's your time they may be like oh um i'm just making up a reason for like a 15 which is no, but, um you can say that and they may think oh since she has a slow time i may not have to run fast like no you and if you ask them like oh what's your time and they say like a 16 or a 15 they're gonna think you, you can run you don't need to run that fast since their time obviously isn't up to standards of years but no you need to work your hardest even if you are the first one out and if you're you don't see anyone you know next to you as you're running you know you're running you're seeing that finish line but but you're trying to get your PR which PR stands for personal record if you didn't know but you're trying to beat your time I'm still working on that um, it's really hard especially if you're running the 100 because that millisecond goes like quick it's hard to just lean and get in there that's another thing is if there's a girl right next to you and it's first you're battling out you're battling out make sure to lean because when they get that camera shot of you leaning you're there first which is also something some of you may have not have known. If you lean, you want to lean like this, not like that. Because that girl's obviously going to get in front of you. And she, it's going to look like that in the camera. And they're going to get her first place. So you want to make sure you just lean. I'm still working on that for myself. So once I actually, you know, get it together and, you know, just, you know, lean in there. That's another way to get your time down is leaning. And make sure your strides are big and don't have your hands like this. Make sure they're like and back, 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 and they're right at a degree eight inches from your face. 